Yo, dude, this hand is automatic win. It's good. Oh, oh no. We can't add cards to our hand. Ex uh, no searching, no searching. It's okay. We don't need searching. We're gonna go ahead and make Ashram and just beat him down. Um, I don't think most decks, like, like what does this deck do against Ashram? All this deck does is go Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon, oh, protect me, protect me, protect me, and that's it. And, and then you just beat the deck. Uh, because this deck is very linear in what it can do. My deck basically is a two box deck that just makes Astra. I mean, this deck doesn't want <laughs> Thunder Dragon Pass. All right, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and normal summon this card. And then we stack our whole deck. So we're going to put one earth, one water, one fire, one wind. And it doesn't really matter the order because we special summoning them all. Uh, so, the most important one though is the one that uh, you can t uh, face up monster on the, uh, the field and banish it. Uh, I can make them draw too. We'll go with. I just want to banish this card. Alright, so let's go ahead and activate some of the dangers that are coming out now. Oh, what do you do? We drew that. What, Mothman's effect? Sure, dude, we'll just both draw cards. And we drew that, so I'm gonna go ahead and special summon it. It doesn't really matter. They're all they all gonna special summon them. So they all the whole crew coming out. And then we're gonna go ahead and discard the snake. You know what? Snake's effect, sure, dude. I'm gonna special summon it anyways. Coatlas. Oh. At this point, it doesn't even matter though. Um, so, uh, we could we could continuously go here, um, but I, I need to make some more room. So what we're going to go ahead and do is make one of these cards. And it doesn't really matter which one, uh, as long as I have the space down over here. And we're going to go ahead and activate this card's effect. And yeah, sure, we'll go ahead and get that effect. Go ahead and special summon the monster from the deck. And it's in defense position, but it doesn't really matter. And then our snake boy. Oof, that's unfortunate. All right, well, I mean, at the end of the day, we just go ahead and, uh, what do I want to make? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just going to end up making Ashram anyways. So we can keep that other card. We'll make um, another, just any Link 2. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have made this one. Um, I mean, that returns it to the deck. Uh, you know what? It's fine. It's, that card's not going to really do us any good. And if I can get rid of a hand trap, why not? And then just make this. And then and then he quits. A pendulum's playable? Yeah, pendulum's playable. Why wouldn't it be playable? In fact, one of the uh, newer decks, the Magical Citadel, I don't know what they actually end up naming it in the TCG, but um, it's very viable. So, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm curious to see what he makes against this. What, what is what is uh, D Dino Thunders do against Astrum? Alright, what is that one? Uh... Oh, once per battle. So you'd have to <clears throat> slam... Like, what else would have high enough attack? Has to be a monster effect activating in the hand. Oh, uh, I think the small one. If he plays it, that is. I'm 
something. We can add a banished one. To add another avian. So he's 31. Uh, then I guess just attack twice. Dang, dude, that 100 extra attack. I think that'd be GG then. But the next card we top deck vanishes until the next, the next phase, anyways. What does it gain the attack until uh, during that battle only? At least I can shuffle one card still, and then I get top deck and get to banish one card. I don't think it's good enough. It will hit him for three k though. But what else can he make? Okay. <laughs> he about to get Winged Dragon Ross Fear Mode on hundred percent. Just watch this. Oh we got he got back row. Alright. This guy this guy's probably playing meta. I, I I don't understand because I'm pretty sure that's a once per turn. This hand is unfortunately like, actually unplayable though. Like it's it's so incredibly bad. If I don't top deck a danger or a light of Seca, I actually just lose. Uh, I might be able to wing dragon rock sphere mode his entire board though. Like if he happens to go Coatlas and force a uh, turn one. Which he, he might. He might uh he might put I hope he just does just doesn't put two monsters up on board. I want him to. I want him to go all in, dude. Someone like a Thunder Dragon too, but I don't think it's gonna happen with the the card in his hand. Oh wow, we 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 got lucky on that one. Uh, I don't really want to lose out on the because I feel like if I wait, I might lose. But that's that that's what I do. I want to get a hype Wing Dragon Ross Sphere mode. So I, I, I'm I'm gonna let it go for one turn. I just I want to wing dragon off spear mode him. I know I can I can make like an ashram and probably make him just quit the game anyways. But I want to wing dragon off spear mode this guy. So bad, dude. You're putting putting way too much mix ups in here. Like you put danger. He hasn't been monster though. It's it's pretty much GG at that point. Okay, fine. You can take game two. I sh I shouldn't give him a turn. Can we win Dragon Ross Fear Mode? Oh my gosh, this hand is terrible. You oh my gosh, I literally drew four Fortune Fairies. If you draw four Fortune Fairies, is is pretty much no go. Uh, I need like a Light of Seca turn one. I, I hope he just goes like Dolka, Dolka, the the boss Dino, and then like one of the Thunderbird, and I just wind draw Sphere Modem, and he can go quit. Hopefully.
Or even just like that pass. I actually, I would rather him like make more. There we go. None of the dangers are dinos, are they? That'd be really dirty if there was like a level four dinosaur one. I'm surprised that they haven't came out with a uh, a dinosaur one. I guess Loch Ness monster is kind of like a, but I mean they considered it aqua. It could have easily been a dinosaur. Okay. Moon dry Ross Oh sweet. The reason why I'm doing this is just to deck them. He's gonna flip down what why why does he need to flip down immediately? I I, I don't understand that. That's fine, I, it gets rid of that. That's so weird. That he's just like, I need to get rid of this right now. You you're gonna regret that man, that's for sure. Let's go, Sky Blast and get all them tokens! Yeah, Sky Blaster tokens. Uh, let's go ahead and make a... Uh... Let's go make Sarah Yuja. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Put those fortune fairies back. Any order, too, which is great. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to special summon all of them anyways. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, sir, sir, I have no, I have no uh, spells. Can I, can I, can I please just special summon some extra cards? Thank you. Oh, shoot, dude. He got, he's going to get destroyed. <laughs> this card, I can, um... Banish a spellcaster monster from the deck. Sure, why not? Just because, why not? Uh, now, we did use our normal summon this turn, but uh, go ahead and... Uh, I, mean, I could literally just make Ashram, and like that's just like game over for his deck. Uh, what do I want to go for, though? Because I can't do anything with it face down. Actually, we could we could continue this uh, even more. Too bad we couldn't rain dry off here because we summoned the. Uh, that would have been really good. I'm sure he would have been like really upset about that. But like, Ashram just beats most dinosaur decks. Like because he happens to have like the, the other cards. Sometimes it can be pretty viable. Oh my god, Ninja Chupacabra. All right, let's go ahead and special summon. Um, we're just gonna use uh, these two, so I can. Uh... Oh, you. Did... We have to have this one. Oh, because this one requires. This can't. It's, it's like except for tokens or oh, to affect monsters, whatever. Uh, so we still have both of that. The snake boy will, will summon himself regardless. You can go get smacked by the Mister Snake. Sure, I'll get that effect. Uh, in, in this instance, we won't be able to summon the other card, but it's got attack. Um, now we go ahead and make a... Ooh, I could go for a Polursa. That's actually pretty good, too. Um, I could use, what, one, two, three, four, five? And <laughs> just negate every single effect. Um, or I can literally just make Ashram. We'll make. 
Return summon to the deck. I mean, either way, I'll still smack him for the same amount of damage. So... Does it really matter? Actually, I could have put that in defense mode. I mean, I could just have this die. Um, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter too much at this point. I don't feel like his deck has an out to Ashram. So he can summon the other card. He can flip him face down, but you have to attack this card. I really wish I could bring Dragon to Rust, Fear about him, but you know, the Fortune Fairy deck is fun. Right, I want to see how he plays this out. Genuinely curious to see if he can get over this monster. Not no Castell going get, to get over this. And you have to attack it. So you, you can flip my monster's face down. You go do it, bro. Okay, there's face down. <laughs> and he's gonna... Dude, he's gonna prank himself for the second time, dude. He pranked himself the first time because this is a once per uh, battle. He's gonna attack this and it's like, oh, you have to attack this. And he's gonna be like, oh my gosh, I done goofed. I done goofed. And then we got flip of the danger nessies. If I only had a number 11 big guy, I'd be able to snatch steal that monster even though more than likely... Um, he would probably just just get rid of... Uh, he can destroy himself, right? Uh, it's not one other monster, so he'd just destroy himself. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's it's game... <laughs> that was a quit, dude. Astrum confirmed too good. Fortune Fairy uh, Dangers too good, man. But anyways, if you guys want the deck profile real briefly, um, here it is. So basically, just... Uh, we were running pretty much most... Mostly all the dangers. Um, sort of, oh, okay, there we go. Um, so I gotta give a shout out to Teriyaki because he he's the one that basically made this deck. I changed it up a bit for my own liking, but um, Light of Seca, you like you gotta play this. This is pretty much in every single build. He decided to play the the Phantom Sky Blaster because like when you summon a bunch of these, like you don't really need your normal summon in the deck. So I included Wing Drowner Ross Sphere, but I, I forgot what exactly he was playing. I think. He was just playing Sky Blaster. I don't remember exactly what he was playing. Anyways, but I took his deck and I just put in what I wanted to. The, the extra deck is pretty much like optimal anyways. Uh, but the most important thing is, I think Wing Dragon Ross Room is too good because you don't need your roll of summon. If your opponent opens up with a board of just negate, 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 um, you can just go ahead and throw up Wing Dragon Ross Sphere Mode. You summon the Dark Doriata. You stack your entire deck. Um, and then... You can go ahead and just danger them, and you know what we're going to go into every single time. His deck didn't have any back row, um, I think. But it's not a bad um, effect of the Fortune Fairies just to cycle through some of your cards. They almost run with the Fortune Lady. So the Earth one makes it so each player draws a card. The uh, Dark one makes it so you banish the Spellcaster. Uh, and then later, uh, the Green one lets you target one of your banished Spellcasters and add it to your hand. It's not really too useful uh, because these cards only get their effect if they are uh, special summoned from the hand. So instead, what you actually do with it is you end up making a Star Yudra and you reset your uh, your Fortune Fairy so you don't have them and you hopefully get dangers. Um, and then the red one lets you pop a set card your opponent controls. The light one just lets you um, go into another one of itself. It's another level one spellcaster. You can tactically run Valor, but... You want to try to optimize and run as many uh, copies of like the Fortune Fairies as you can. Um, the uh, where's the other one? Yeah, this one over here. Um, yeah, it just gives you some extra draw power. But overall, it's just more of a fun deck than anything. It always ends up just making like 
one extra deck monster is what it really does, but it's, it's like for very free. Um, I think, honestly, I might bump up the fire one to like one more. It's the only other card that lets you get like some type of advantage. If there's a fortune fairy, um, like, oh, the, the water one, okay, I didn't go over the water one. The water one lets you target a face up monster on the field and banish it. So like, I might bump up the water and the fire one up more, if any, uh, in the deck. Um, basically all of them are just special summoning itself. I'm playing two copies of each. But the water one and the fire one are the only one that really give you any advantage. But it's pretty nice to be able to special summon it and then like get rid of one card. Because this one banishes it until the next standby phase of the next turn. It doesn't really matter because at that point you can sometimes OTK them. Uh, you basically need to get kind of lucky though. It's a little bit of RNG. You basically need to throw out a danger, like usually get rid of one card, and then throw out... Um, usually it's going to be Ashram. Ashram destroy something or if the opponent doesn't really have anything you can uh boral sword so you get to um, activate that effect and uh, you can actually um where is it uh or was it boral card uh, make a okay yeah, boral sword you you can attack twice with this and then if you have a danger and then you've already sent back one card and then you have like another maybe another card you can OTK your opponent. Um, so that's that's the Fortune Fairy Danger Doriado is what I think I want to call this deck. But uh, anyways, now, now this was my mine over here. But uh, I had to uh, go to watch a uh, replay over here. There's one more that I can show off. I think this is going to be way too long of a video. Oh, this is, a, is this the one? There's one of them where he pranks his opponent. But basically, um, it's the same concept. This is uh, taken from Teriyaki's uh, build, like I said. It's... I would say it's pretty like standard to to play most of these cards, but the Sky Blaster mix up is great. So like Light of Psycho is insanely good in the deck. You can see you go for Astrum, and then Light of Psycho lets you reset one card, and then you can go ahead and just special summon as many cards as you possibly can, basically, and then go into other things. So this one is a little bit interesting. So he ends up making Track Black here. So you can target one monster card you point to this turn each time it destroys an opponent's monster by battle. You get to uh, draw one card. You can only use this effect once per turn. And so at this point, he ends up making uh, Polarsa. I actually had the option to make this card as well. So that is ideally what you do. And what's even cooler, and the reason why I want to show off this specific replay, the card that you draw off of um, the previous card's effect, uh, because uh, Crusadia destroyed a monster, he drew a Fortune Fairy, and he's able to still special summon it during the battle phase, which is pretty cool. Um, and also you're negating the effect. So the goal, if the, the game prolongs to another uh, turn, um, you can just go ahead and make a Polar Ursa, and then from there you should be good to go, uh, as long as this card has enough negates. Easy claps, man. But there it is. Um, the Fortune Fairy Danger build using the new stuff. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. Let me know your thoughts on Fortunate Fairies now that you've seen them in action down below. But thanks for watching, guys, and if you're new... Watch this on YouTube, drop a like on it, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! gameplay, as well as deck profiles in action. And I'll mouse over the extra deck real quick, but pretty much just like some of the more random ones. But it showed the the, 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 the ability of Track Black, because uh, I didn't really, I was like, at first I looked at this card, I was like, what the heck is here? It, it's one of those cards where like randomly you can get an advantage out of it, but it's not too often that you'll get it. Uh, because most of the time, I would probably just make a Polarsa and then you just win. But anyways, thanks for watching and peace.